I think we're live. I think we're live. I think we are. Let me just double check. Hello, everyone who's coming in. I don't see you yet, but I'm about to check our group. Yes, they're coming on in. They're coming on in. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Come on in the room. We're really, really, really excited. All right. I can even hear myself. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Joycelyn. Hi, Natasha. Um, we apologize for being a little late. We had some technical difficulties. But as you can see, we're alive and in living color. Come on in. <laughs> so I'm going to give others... Um, time to come in the room so as you come in please say hello so that we acknowledge you i want to acknowledge everyone that comes in the room come on in hello michelle come on in all right the numbers are going up this is really exciting come on in say hello please say hello Thank you for bearing with us. Well, we are all warmed up, we're hot, we're fiery, and we're just ready. I hope that all of you have your, your questions. If you have more questions, you have your questions ready. Um, insights, um, what else? Your comments, I hope you're ready to really fully engage because this is gonna be a, an epic conversation, okay? so. Please be prepared for what's about to drop in here. All right. So as um, others come in the room, hi, Kara. I want to formally introduce to you this uh, beautiful woman that you see sharing the screen with me. Um, she's an amazing woman. And um, her name is Suzette Vernon. Okay, um, she's an author, a speaker, a life coach, and a relationship solutionist with a music math approach to dating and relating. The foundation for her patented approach is evidence in what she calls the three critical factors of enoughness. I wanna know if there's anybody in here who knows they're enough. If you know you're enough, just type enough in the comments. All right? And what she calls the three critical factors of enoughness. The first one, the first factor is your voice, okay? The second factor is your value. And the third factor is your vision. Did you catch that? Your voice, your value, and your vision. She believes that by amplifying these factors, high achieving women, and a few cool men too, <laughs> can redefine what makes them enough on their own terms. And by doing so, experience life and love in a brand new way. I want to know if anybody in this room is really ready to experience love in a brand new way. I know I am. I'm always open for the newness. Yes, yes, yes. Suzette is also the founder of Enough Factor Connect. It's a Facebook group that provides accountability and support to all bold enough to go deep inside themselves to where their enoughness resides. Is that not juicy? <laughs> okay. Um, and she has an amazing podcast. And after this, I'm going to share with you all the links so that you can follow her. Her podcast is phenomenal. You definitely want to to tune in, download, replay, replay, because it will transform your life. And um, most of all, I'm going to let you all know that Suzette was and still is my coach. I love her. Um, I met her at a time in my life where my relationships were kind of, oh, you know, and I was looking for love. I wanted love. 
And she had this amazing workshop that shifted my life shifted my life so much that I had to take it two times. That's how, that's when you know it's good. And I just want to let you all know that I'm a coach, but I, I'm not coaching you because I just want to coach you. I believe in coaching. Mm. Coaching works, but it works if you work it. Yes. You have to be open and you have to do the work. Anyway, I've done enough talking. Suzette, please say hello to Try Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, Try Beautiful. I am so glad to be here with you tonight. When Andrene invited me, I was like, girl, you know my answer is yes, because every time we come together, we create magic. And I think it's because we're both genuine. We both genuinely care. Yes. And we both have had to be courageous enough yes. to face our blind spots, to go places that we didn't want to go. Mm-hmm. And so we've been able, I, I told somebody, I said, you know what? I said, even if even hell has no intimidation if you have the key. Oh. And so there have been times in our lives we've had to march into hell yes and come out with the keys and so I think that's what we're bringing to you and I am just honored to be in your presence I'm honored uh to to just be here and whatever I have inside of me that can be a benefit to you I willingly give it because you know what we are all on this journey to become more beautiful for the right reasons not for what people have told us, just like we are enough. And we're defining that on our own terms. You're beautiful. And you're defining that on your own terms. And if I can be a catalyst, a help, a sister friend, whatever, then I'm just, I'm down for it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. So I see April in the room. Hi, April. Hi, Cassandra. Hi, Kamisha. Hi, Latrell. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for showing up. We love this. We love you. And we're here to serve you. Yes. And, you know, Suzette, you spoke about marching into hell. Girl. I need for you to just talk about some of the hell. Because, you know, usually people see our glory. They see us Mm -hmm. all happy, Mm -hmm. not really understanding the magnitude. Oh, my God. That came before, you know. So Mm -hmm. can you share with them? your story sure oh my god i as andrew Nay said you know we're on this side and and sometimes people think because you don't look like what you've been through that you didn't go through anything mm-hmm. and they kind of say i want what you have and you think to yourself oh wait a minute <laughs> it 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 cost me a leg and and hands and feet to get this <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and the same is true for where i am Uh, Because we're here to talk about relationships, I'll give you the relationship part. Um, I didn't find love until my late 40s, early 50s. I had been through two bad marriages, both of which were to the same man. Yeah, to the same man. And uh, I realized that a lot of it was because I did not really understand my value and I didn't understand how men are. Mm. And so both of those things caused me to attract into my life what could not ever give me what I wanted. Mm. You see, I was a middle child. And so I came up from my childhood on up feeling like I was invisible, feeling like I had my voice didn't matter. Mm. And when you don't feel like your voice matters, you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, you don't know what to value. Mm. And if you don't know who you are, your vision for yourself is shaped by the people that tell you who they think you should be and what they perceive you to be. And I went through that all my life. And so I lost the sound of my voice. Mm. As a result of that, I had no sense of what really typified the truth about my value. And the vision that I held for myself at that time was I felt like if I could just find a Prince Charming, if I could just find 
a man that could love me, mm. that that would solve everything for me because I longed for a family. I was in one, but how many of you out there understand that just because you were born into a family doesn't mean you feel like you fit? How and many can relate? Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I didn't feel like I fit. I felt like my family loved me to the best of their ability, but I always felt like I had to nip tuck areas of myself into complying else I was shamed. I was blamed. I was guilted or the worst I was neglected. Mm. And when you're neglected, you feel like you're not even, what value do you have? They don't even see you, you know? So I felt I felt that for most of my growing up years. And so, you know, when I think about the, the man that I attracted, it's like, you know, why me? But then I was like, why not me? Mm. Given the way I came up, of course I would attract a man like that. Mm. Of course I would attract a man that was emotionally unavailable. Of course I would attract a man that I uh, found experientially, and I'll say experientially, was gay. I, of course, of course mm -hmm. I would, mm -hmm. because I was raised to not honor my womanliness or my sexuality. So of wow. course I would choose someone who didn't want me. Of wow. course I would. And so going through that, just being married to someone day after day, second by second, minute by minute, who mm -hmm. does not want you, no matter how much more woman you become, it's going to make him not want you more. Wow. You know, it's like the I only could operate within my woman and my womanliness, my feminine frame. So the more woman I became, the less he wanted me. Wow. And to live through that was its own form of hell. That's why I said there are some things that you go through that you march straight into hell and discover who you are in that hill. Yes. So you can get the keys to come out of it. And so that's my story. So it's a miracle mm -hmm. that after going through that twice, wow. and that right there is a mental health issue all within itself. <laughs> I go through that twice, you know, it's yes. like a mental health issue and a couple of bottles of, and mm -hmm. I don't mean Kool-Aid or... <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, if I tell you my true story, we're going to get drunk. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a miracle yes. that in, in really regaining the pieces of my enoughness, the things that made me beautiful, it was a journey. It was recovering one piece at a time mm. and falling a lot, but learning to fall forward instead of falling backward. And finally, getting to a point with therapy, with Jesus and with therapy, mm -hmm. both, both walk, working together with Jesus and with therapy mm -hmm. to, to get clear, to, 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 get, to get clear about what made me enough so that I would not continue to suffer with trust issues, mm -hmm. so that I would not continue to attract to me unavailable men, whether they were heterosexual or homosexual was you know, they still were unavailable emotionally so that I could get myself out of that uh, whirlpool yes. of toxicity and codependency. Mm -hmm. and so at, to be able to, at age 55, wow. marry the love of my life. 55, y'all. By 55 years so old. it's not too late. It's not too late. We dated, we met each other. I think I had maybe just turned... 50 so we dated for well maybe 51 because we dated for four years mm -hmm. before we got married wow and had I not done the work can you imagine can you imagine a woman that comes into a relationship with a man who has not been loved for who she is how I could have sabotaged that thing so many different ways and that's why I tell people you have to you have to do you have to do the work and as my uh, my mentor, Patrice Washington, says, you got to give God something to bless. Yes. And so my doing the work on myself gave God something to bless. And as a result of that, he helped me to manifest this man who is, I didn't even know men existed like him. Mm. But that was 
because of being bold and courageous enough to do the work. So whatever answers that I share today, whatever things I share are not going to come necessarily from books I read. Mm -hmm. They're going to come from the dragons I slayed. Come on. To get here. My handsome prince didn't slay my dragons. I had to sl slay them. And as a result of me slaying them, now I found a person who I can be equal with, who I can be yes. completely myself with. And he loves it, warts and all. And so that's why, not that I'm an expert in the you know, relationship field per se, or e even in the mental health field, mm -hmm. but I have gone through enough mm -hmm. that I've learned something of value. And if it brought me through, then I believe it can bring you through too. I love it. I love it. And I love how much you stress doing the work because usually when we come across uh, conflict in relationships, whether it be with the opposite sex, the same sex, whoever you decide to love, family members, mm -hmm. um, co-workers, bosses, we are always looking, well, we're not always looking, but usually the, 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 the first thing is we, we want them to change something. Yeah. We want them to act right. Mm -hmm. we, we don't understand why they, mm -hmm. but understanding that we have to look within. Oh yeah. Can you talk about what doing the work looks like? Cause somebody must be like, okay, but what work I gotta do? <laughs> well, I've been praying and telling Jesus to change. Yes, I've been praying, fasting. Um, I wrote down all of the, the my list of things that I want him I to do. I lost the weight. I got it. I claimed it. <laughs> Stood at the altar with my hands raised. Yes. And somebody prophesied. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Talk to me. Doing the work. The first thing, and Andrew and uh, said it, the first key in doing the work is acknowledging that it's not the person that is the problem. I know that's really hard. I know that's really hard. So we're going to take a deep breath. Like Ayala says, just breathe, baby, just breathe. Y'all breathing? We think that that person is the problem and if all if god could just change that person everything would be fine but even in the situation that i described earlier one of the things i had to learn was it wasn't so much that he was who he was mm. it was that i didn't know who i was okay can you just say that one more time because that's critical say that one more time that it wasn't so much that he was who he was mm -hmm. it's that i did not know who i was and when and i said it again if you don't know who you are then you don't know how to use your voice right you don't know your value right. and your vision is skewed wow. you can't really see yourself through the eyes of value. You can't. And so you have to first realize they have their issues, but the problem is within you. And I know that's tough. It, that's was, tough. Tough. it was tough for me because I'm like, it's because he gay. It's because he gay. It's like, no, there were issues preceding that. Mm -hmm. There was something broken inside of me mm -hmm. that made me attract that in my life and made me stay as long as I did. Mm. What made you stay? Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that God had to deal with me about, because I used to say, you know, every time, this happened all the time, God, I was, I was, I was sick of it. I was sick of it. And he said, he said, you know what? He said, the issue isn't them. He said, the issue is you. The issue is you. Because the thing about it is, and I say it, I, I did an audio call, um, Take Your Heart Back. Mm. And in it, 
it was the realization that I could not blame that other person for what I allowed. They no. didn't have nothing to do with that. No. I made the decision, even though what they said was one thing and what they did was another, I made the decision. Yeah. The hope in what they said, though their behavior was telling me something different. Yeah. It was on me. Mm -hmm. I was the one that was responsible. And the other thing that God reminded me of, because I was still harboring resentment, he said, don't blame them for what you did not resolve. Don't blame them because you chose what you chose instead of exhausting every resource available to you to heal your own heart. Wow. You can't blame them for what you've harbored for what you've carried and blame them for all these years. That's on you. Whoa. That's the out you gave yourself because you didn't understand you were valuable enough to go to the therapist, the psychiatrist, the preacher, the pastor, the butcher, the candlestick maker, to go to whatever resource came your way. Put throw your dollars in the ring and spend whatever you had to spend to save your own self, to heal your own self. You punked out. Wow. You punked out and gave yourself an out for your lack of investment in your own healing. And God had to call me on the carpet for that. But wait, Suzette, Suzette but I'm waiting on God to heal me. God is waiting on me to heal my own heart? Can we talk about that? Can we talk about that? Because I believe that when Jesus said it was finished, it really was. Don't listen. Don't make me do cartwheels in here. <laughs> you know, I just happen to believe uh -huh. that when he said, I've done everything necessary Whew. to redeem you, I just happen to believe that that meant everything. That means that every resource is available. It, he Sometimes he'll speak directly. We all know that. Mm -hmm. But other times he speaks through other people. Yes. He can speak through the therapist. He can speak through the, the uh, psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. Why are you limiting him? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we're limiting. Well, I, I'm waiting on him. Well, he's waiting for you to recognize him. My God. Because you have in your head the way that he's supposed to show up. And the one thing I've learned about God in my unconventional journey, he never shows up the way I expected him to. Never. 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 Surprises me every single time. Gotta and be I grew up in church. Mm -hmm. So there is not a scripture you can give me that I have not already heard mm -hmm. 50,000 times. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I, I, I realize is a lot of times we have been trained to impose on the letter what we've been trained to expect. Yes. Instead of taking a step back and opening and clearing our minds and understanding God is so limitless. Right. The possibilities of how he can heal and, and, and speak and redeem and do are limitless. Yes. And we put so many, we put him in a box. Yes. And he's too big for that. Too and so we have to have a greater expectation. Mm -hmm. Not be like the people of old, that because he didn't come the way they expected him to, they rejected him. Mm. You know, and so I had to broaden my view because I'm going to tell y'all, my biggest deliverances did not come while I was in church. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just talking to you from me. Yours might be. Yours might be. Mm -hmm. For me, mine didn't come from church. And I was in church all my life. Yes. I was in church where we spoke in tongues, believed God, deliverance yes. the whole nine. Yes. But my biggest transformation, mm -hmm. not just a feeling. But transformation, the real deal, mm -hmm. came outside of those four walls. 
I remember the first thing that, that shifted me was laying on my sister. I had been praying and asking God to please help me. I was stuck on this guy that could not love me, but I was convinced he was mine. Convinced. He was been mine. there multiple times. I know. Mm -hmm. Convinced. I was so stuck in that till I could not get myself out. Mm -hmm. Even when he got married, I still thought he was mine. And I was, I mean, I Been could there. not release it. And one of the things that was interesting enough, I was asking God, please, I'm sick of this. I've been carrying this torch for this man for 12 long years. Mm. My life has been eaten up being crazy about a man that can never give me what it is I desire. Mm. And here I am holding out and it's not getting me anything but miserable. And so I never forget, I was praying that prayer, Lord, I can't, I feel like I'm stuck in this and I just, I don't know how to get, get out of it. I just don't know. You mm. got to help me. His help did not come when I went to church. His mm. help did not come from my Bible. Mm. I happened to go upstairs to my sister's room. Laying smack dab in the middle of her bed was a book that had this title, Love is a Choice. Everything in me knew that was God. Yes. Because up until that time, love was never a choice. It was, it was something that, oh God, if you're in love, you can't help yourself. And you're, you're, if you're in love, you can't resist temptation. You just got to sleep with him. If you're in love, you can't get yourself out. If you're in love, you are just deaf, dumb, and blind. And oh my God, oh my God, I can't help it. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't even stay saved because I'm just so messed. I'm so into him. I thought that was love. Mm. So when I saw the words, love is a choice. I grabbed that book so fast, y'all, and I, I, I looked at the pages, and, and that book became the beginnings of my transformation. Wow. That book itself, I read it from cover to cover, and for the first time, I'm telling you, for the first time, and this is when I was in my 20s, maybe early 30s. For the first time, I felt really seen. Mm. I felt like, oh my God, somebody's writing something that is communicating me to me in such a way that I can stop begging God to please change me because something must be wrong with me. Ain't for the first time, wow. for the very first time, I saw myself as not a problem. Mm. that needed to be solved for the first time. That's powerful. And so this did not happen in the church building. Mm -hmm. And I think because of my history in church, church for me perpetuated more my codependence. Yeah. It, it, it perpetuated more. Mm -hmm. It did not heal me. It just put me in a collective of other codependent people. And we were just enabling each other to yeah. be in denial. In Jesus' name. Yeah. So that was my story. And so that's what started my transformation. It was a book. A book, y'all. A book met, written by mental health professionals that I've been told all my life, leave them psychologists alone because that's not God. Pray. You need but, the oil. But God is so much bigger, much bigger than anything anybody's ever told you about him or her, if you choose to believe that, so much bigger. And so that started me able to see myself bigger and to see him bigger. And so my journey was continuing to see myself in situations where God revealed his bigness. Mm. And then that bigness inside of me to be able to help myself. Yeah. That he enabled me because he was inside of me. That's profound. I had the ability to heal myself. Recognizing the That's bigness him. inside of you. That's the God in you. That's him. So that you can heal your.
self. Yes, yes. Profound. Yes, yes. Profound. Let me just check the comments to see. All right, let me tell you what they're saying. Talk to me. You're talking to somebody. (laughs) My God. Yes, yes. Putting God in a tiny little box. That's right. God is too big for the little box, y'all. Yes, investing in yourself. Yes. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Suzette is here to answer your questions as she continues to share her experience and her story. Um, And I love it that she's not afraid to tell you everything. She's not afraid to be vulnerable because she's very safe within herself. But she had to do the work to get to this space. Um, There are some tribe members who have recently come out of toxic relationships, Mm -hmm. uh, toxic relationship situations. And um, just, I guess they're in a space where they're trying to figure out who they are. And you've already spoken to that. Oh, yeah. Residue. What do you do with the residue? You know? Oh, my God. Yeah. How did you, as coming out of two... Oh, uh, marriages of the, with the same man, like the residue of that. Oh my, it was all, like yeah, it was all so convoluted because he was a minister mm. and we were ministers at the church. And so for me, what happened, there was a lot of shame and a lot of embarrassment mm-hmm. because the pastors called me into their office and told me that, um, different uh, men in the congregation were starting to come to them puzzled about some of the things he had said to them and suggested. Um, And so they wanted to talk to me. Uh, And so it it was a it was humiliating. It was toxic. And originally when I left church, it was because I felt so paranoid. I felt so, you know how you almost feel like everybody's looking at you. Yeah. Mm hmm. And, and, and you feel like boo-boo the fool. Mm-hmm. And that it was public because here you are. Not only was the situation about him being gay and all of that, but he also had a debilitating um, uh, physical issue that kind of was like a chronic or the worst form of MS, but the doctors gave it this, this real you know, medical name. Mm-hmm. So here I am the dutiful wife, you know, pushing his wheelchair in, Mm -hmm. you know, living in that whole caregiving space where you're giving more than you can ever get back. And you're giving so much and you're trying so hard to do it right. You're trying so hard to please God. You're trying so hard to keep your family together and to Mm -hmm. find out that behind your back, this person is soliciting not another woman, but men. Mm -hmm. That, that, Talk about toxic and coming out of, of, of a toxic relationship. And I'm telling you this, not so that you can pity me or anything like that, but so that you realize that what I'm telling you, I have some substance to it. That's right. Okay. That's why I'm telling you. And of course, that's the cliff note version. Mm-hmm. Like I said, if I were to tell you the whole thing, you would marvel that I even have common sense. No less could could trust somebody enough to marry them, mm-hmm. you know. So I want to let you all know that what I'm telling you comes from a real place. Yes. And one of the first things I'm going to tell you, um, the first thing I think is continuing the dialogue with God. And I'm not trying to be be. Um, I'm not trying to give you a pet answer. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you because my faith was still a part of me, though at that moment, I struggled in it. Mm-hmm. It was to a point where I told God, I don't trust you. Mm-hmm. How could you let this happen to me? I've been praying all this time mm-hmm. and you let me not marry this man once, but marry him twice. And then my son is being wounded twice. What was the point of this? God, I've done this for you and I've done that for you. How could you let this happen to me? Mm -hmm. So me and God, I won't, I, 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 I won't liken God too much Mm -hmm. when I came out of it. 
I didn't know how to, I, I, I was confused. Everything that I was taught to believe about him, it seemed like he had failed me mm -hmm. and I didn't trust him. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing was even in my lack of trust and some of the bad decisions I made because I was so starved for affection, mm. he kept talking to me That's God. and I hated it. I told him, I said, stop talking to me. Don't tell me who I am. Because mm -hmm. every time you talk to me, I go through hell. Every single time. Don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. And there were things I did in his presence because he wasn't leaving. I could feel his presence when I was sleeping, when I was sleeping around. I could feel his presence when I was doing wrong. Because That's God. It was him, and, and the only thing he kept saying to me when I when I finally got to a point where my conversation with him was not, please go somewhere, please leave me, please stop, please get away, please, and he wouldn't go. And eventually the conversation started being, God, I'm just hurting. Mm. And he said, I know. I know. And I tell you, up until that, I thought that God loved me because of what I did for him. But when I was in a state where I did not want him around, mm -hmm. I didn't trust him. He did not leave me. And some of the greatest blessings I got or when I was in that state of just doing everything wrong. My God. And so I realized in hindsight, the reason I said, keep your dialogue going, even if it's God, I can't stand you. God, I, I hate you. God, how could you do this to me? Even if it's that, that's what's coming out of your spirit, even though your mouth may not say it, keep the dialogue going. I learned that God is not a man. No. He ain't gonna strike you down for saying it. He don't have an ego. No. <laughs> he doesn't have an ego. He already knows who no. he is. He already knows who he is. Oh. There's, there's nothing you can say that's going to make him leave you. There's nothing you can say. He got quiet because I told him to stop talking. But he made his presence known to me so much that even if I got up, I'll be naked in the bed. God done put his clothes on and gone. And I'd be like, God, I can still feel you in here. I don't know what to do about this because you just saw me finish mm -mm, that, that man. You were here the whole time I mm him. <laughs> and he, he was there. And, and so I, the first thing I would say for people of faith, keep your dialogue going. Don't censor it because he knows when you're faking it anyway. And please don't throw, you, throw the word up at him. He already knows. He, you know, he kind of knows what he meant better than we know. So just talk real, just be for real. So that was the first thing that helped me. I kept the dialogue going. Mm -hmm. And the second thing was I gave myself permission to not be perfect. Mm. Because I thought that I needed after coming out of toxicity, the thing that you have to understand just as if you broke your leg and somebody told you, now I want you to walk. I want you to walk straight to me. Would you be upset with yourself if you couldn't do it? If your leg is broke, you can't walk, right? Your leg is broke. That's right. So you wouldn't expect yourself to be able to walk. And even if somebody told you, you should be able to walk, you'd be like, but my leg is broke. You see what I'm saying? Self-acceptance. And when you come out of a toxic relationship, mm -hmm. your heart is broken. Yeah. Your sense of who you are is broken. Yes. So you cannot expect yourself to behave like a person who's not broken. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't expect you to behave that way either. No. So understand that. Understand that. That just because you're able to function and go back to work and raise your kids and do that, 
does not mean you're healed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us carry that mm -hmm. because you meet a, the way you can tell how healed you are is how you are when you're in an intimate relationship. When, That's somebody, the truth. when somebody shows up that is interested and they've made it known they're interested in you, how comfortable are you? Are you waiting for the next shoe to drop? Are you scared to death? Are, are, are you afraid? Are, are, oh, oh, are you anxious? Are you like, oh, oh, I, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Every time it goes deeper, you, oh, oh, you're scared to death. That lets you know your heart is still not healed. Mm -hmm. That's how you know. So yeah. there are a lot of people around here that we admire a lot. But when they get into a relationship, you can tell they're not okay. Wow. They're not okay. And so definitely keep the dialogue with God going mm -hmm. and face the reality that when you come out of a toxic relationship, you are not okay. Yeah. So when you don't act okay, duh, it's because you're not okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's harder when it's emotional than it is when your leg is broke. Because when your leg is broke, people can see that. Yeah emotional hurt you carry inside mm -hmm. and so it makes it it subjects you to more scrutiny from people who don't know how to deal with it and mm -hmm. most of the, most of the time they deal with you the way that they do is because nobody ever ever dealt with them with grace mm -hmm. and compassion before mm -hmm. and that's what you're dealing with they don't know how to take you in this state because they're not comfortable with themselves and that's why I, the third thing is get around people. And I want you to hear this. Not people who are going to pacify you. Right. Right. But people who can help heal. Yeah. A lot of our circles enable us to stay unhealed. That's true. That is true. A lot of us hang around these women that say, you know, girl, I don't trust them neither. Girl, uh-uh, if I was you, that ain't going to help you heal. No. You're going to be years and years having the same conversation with the same folks. That's right. So put yourself in a situation where you can get healed. If you don't have a friend that has the capacity and the maturity to do that, then go to someone professional. Mm -hmm. There is no shame in it. May is mental health month and we're yes. trying to remove the stigma. Yes. Some mental health challenges are situational. Mm -hmm. Toxic Coming out of a toxic relationship is a situational mental health issue mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed. Yeah. And so you go to somebody that you feel comfortable with Mm -hmm. That will help you heal, will help you with the blind spots, will yes. help you with your self-esteem, will help you. And you'll know, by the way, something inside of you will let you know this is the right person. You might not like what they say. You might not like the medicine. But something inside of you will let you know this is the right person. And even if I don't feel good in the beginning, and just like the same medical example, your leg in the cast is not going to feel good in the beginning. Mm -mm. You got to wear it for a while. Yes. You got to lift that leg up. You got mm -hmm. to do these different things. Same thing with your emotional health. You've got to be consistent and committed through the stage where it seems like nothing is happening. If yes. anything, you feel worse. Yes. Yeah. That's the kindest Thing, that's giving God something to work with. Yes. Because you're still talking to him, right? You're telling yourself the truth. I've been hurt mm -hmm. and I'm not over it. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Anybody else go, went through this wouldn't be either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm taking myself to some place that I can be whole. I can be healed. Mm -hmm. I changed that I can be healed because wholeness comes another way. Mm -hmm. I can be healed. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So I think those are, are very important things. Should you rush into a relationship with the next man that pays attention or makes you think he has the potential to do for you what the other man didn't do? Mm -mm. Because you're not healed, even if he's a good man you can still sabotage the relationship because you're not healed. Yeah. You're not ready. True. Even if he's good, you're not ready. And even if you don't follow my advice and you still get involved, I can kind of be like, okay, as long as you're going to see somebody who can heal. Yes. As long as you're doing the work. As long as you're doing the work. As long as you're doing the work. And now I'll tell you the other side of it, however. Mm-hmm. It's hard for healing to take occupancy in a place where somebody else is. If your heart is open and you got somebody already in it, it limits your capacity for the depth and breadth of healing that you could get if they weren't in the picture because you feel divided. Yeah. You, you, you're trying to heal, but you got this person that has your focus and your attention. Yeah. So the, 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 the professional's telling you one thing, but your codependency with him is telling you another. Yeah. And so it can make it even more difficult. Yeah. So if you were to ask my advice, I would say, don't get yeah. involved. But if you are, you can still get help. Cause yeah. many of us, like I said, if you, can, if you have the keys, you know, sometimes you march in the hill, you get your keys. Yes. Yep. So if you're in that situation, you can still get your keys. I'm just saying, if you're not, I wouldn't rush into it because you're not ready. Not ready. You're not ready. Yes. Let's see what the, this is so good. I almost started crying. <laughs> um, Sharon said, this is what people need to hear. And this is what people need to hear about God. Yes. Mm -hmm. about God not having an ego he doesn't and I love I love I love how you touched on um really loving yourself where you're at because mm -hmm. sometimes you know there's this conversation that's saying I should be here by now or I should be no mm -mm. loving and accepting you where you are mm -hmm. and just continuing to do the work and exactly. Trust, trusting the process. Exactly. The process. Exactly. Because uh, um, you can end up sabotaging yourself with one three letter word. Why? Yeah. Why will keep you in stuff beyond its expiration date? Yeah. Because you're trying to figure out why. Yeah. Why will keep you emotionally attached to somebody you need to detach from? Because you're trying to figure out why. Yeah. So, you know, even if, even if you have, maybe, even if it's been 20 years, 30 years, and you still are dealing with something, give yourself grace. Grace. Give yourself grace. Because you can, can't have been but so stuck because look at where you are now, listening yeah. to us. Yes, and that's a big step. That's a big step because you have stepped into an arena of truth. You have stepped into an arena of healing. Yes. So, hey, take take this. Yeah. Take and this. and in God's sufficient grace, it's grace yes. for you to utilize. So, and, and and it's again that conversation about waiting on God. God is like, I gave you the grace. Give it to yourself. Give it to yourself. Give it to yourself. Mm -hmm. Use so, what God has given you. Because he's not surprised. No. We act like he's surprised. Oh, you know, I disappointed God. I failed God. And I'm like, you know, honestly, I don't believe that's true. No. Because if he knows everything, if he knows your thoughts are far off, how can you surprise him? How can you surprise him? I've heard people saying, oh, God, I got to do this because I'm jeopardizing my salvation. How is that so? Exactly. When before you even knew him, he sent his son for you. How, how does that make any sense? How can you surprise him? 
He's not surprised. You the one that's surprised. That's it. He's not surprised. No. And his love for you is not contingent upon it because he made his mind up. Yes. With all that you were, are, and could be. And him already having the inside track of what's coming up. Mm -hmm. He decided you were worth it. Yes. He decided that already made up his mind. He already I love made that. Up. You can't, you can't change it. His, can't mind, change it. his mind about you has already been made up. No matter what you point out to him, no matter how many flaws you point out to him, he's already decided to love you. Already. That's freedom right there. Right there, that's freedom. That's okay. freedom right there. Right there. Not for you to go out and do worse, but for you to realize that you matter. Exactly. That you matter. You matter. You matter, ladies. You oh. matter. Preach, Pastor. No. <laughs> you better yes, stop. Yes. You better stop. <laughs> I better stop. <laughs> Woo! I said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. <laughs> really, Suzette? I'd rather be an Ursha. I'll be an Ursha. <laughs> All you pastors out there, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's all good. It's all good. I love this. This is just so wonderful. So, ladies, if you have any questions, um, we've already been together for an hour, but this is so good. I could go on for hours and hours and hours. But this is just so juicy. This is so juicy. And I love how in this conversation um it really brought out a lot about uh god a new perspective of god a different angle of god because i truly believe how we relate to god is how we relate to everything else and if you view god as egotistical if you if you view god as mad at you god is disappointed in you it's going to flow in every, everything. everything, every area of your life. Mm -hmm. So healing, healing that, that, that knowing that understanding of God is very crucial as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I love how God, when we think we are our most ugliest and our most pitifulest, mm -hmm. God is like, I still see you as my child, as my beloved. Mm -hmm. You can't especially, change my mind. Oh, especially if when I see when I finally got to the point where I was talking to him more than telling him how mad I was at him. And I said, God, I'm just hurt. I'm just hurting. And he was like, I know. God. And that was so beautiful because you know, when you're hurt, you do a lot of things that are not what you would normally do. Right. You know, cause I'm not a cheater. Right. I, it's not in my heart to do right. that. I'm not a, a, a promiscuous person by nature. Right, right. It was because I was hurt. Yes. And God was able to understand that and love me back into my right mind. Yes. And heal and 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 over my journey with him, you know, even the healing that I have now is not all the healing that's gonna happen because he's in my life. Yeah. And so it's just so beautiful. I, I tell you, before I was, a, I was, I loved him because I was afraid of him. Yeah. Now I love him because who wouldn't love a God like that? My God. Who wouldn't? <sighs> who wouldn't? And I'll tell you all, I, I was one of those people that I told God when I met my now husband, I said, you know what? I, I ain't mad at Oprah Stedman. That's I'm so to the point, I live together and don't feel like it's in sin. It's all right with me. I'm cool with it. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool. Yeah. Because I, I have been there and done that. I've been married twice. I've been there and done that. And mm -hmm. I've made up my mind I'm not good at it. <laughs> I said, God, I will accept the fact that some people are good at you know, marriage, but I'm just not good at that. Mm -hmm. so I'm okay with it. All I want, is I just want to know what healthy looks like. Yeah. I just want to be in a relationship with a man that's healthy. Mm -hmm. That's all. I don't have any end game of marriage. I don't have an end game of having a father for my son. I don't have an end right. game of 
him proving to me that man, men can be trusted. No end game. I just want to know what it's like to be in a healthy relationship with somebody who really loves me for me. Yeah. And the work was for me to learn to show up because how is he going to love me for me if I'm hiding? Yeah. So I had to become comfortable enough in my own skin yeah. and my own frailties and my own weaknesses and my become comfortable enough with me as me as is yes. to be able to show up. And so it, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just really grateful that my dream, God's dream for me was bigger because all I wanted was healthy, but he knew he wanted to give me a husband. Mm -hmm. because there's an, and it goes back to what we were saying when I said healing and wholeness are two different things mm -hmm. healing ac was accomplished outside of me marrying my husband mm -hmm. wholeness is being accomplished inside of being married mm -hmm. because it was in marriage where I got hurt so the full circle wholeness is in a situation being married again to heal what mm. got hurt. So now I'm coming to, I could been, I could have been healed, yes. Mm -hmm. But there was a level of wholeness and trust and love that being married is doing for me in ways that I didn't even know I needed. Wow, that's profound. So God's dream for me was bigger than I even what I asked him. He gave me a husband, not just a name, but a real partner, yeah. a real partner that I am just, when I think about him, I just smile and we're going on four years, y'all. By the fourth year in my previous marriages, that was when Rial was starting to sit and I'm like, what in the heck am I doing here? <laughs> so it was always that four or five year mark that... <laughs> Why, why am I here? And here I am at my fourth going on fifth year. And look at the turnaround. Mm -hmm. Look at the turnaround. I love this conversation. It's been amazing. And you know we're gonna have more. Ladies, okay. I know, I know y'all want her back. <laughs> I know y'all want her back. <laughs> will come back she's amazing yes. um make sure i'm gonna post the links in the comments she has a phenomenal podcast phenomenal okay once i put the link in in the comments in the group follow her listen to her you will grow you will your life will change Okay, she is a game changer. And I don't listen to any and anyone. I've reached a point in my life where there's a particular sound that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. It's not churchy. It's not churchy. It's unconventional. It's, it's profound and it's truthful. It's real. And um, I take pride in the people I follow and they're very few. Suzette is one of them. And if y'all trust Andrene, you know what to do, okay? <laughs> but um, Suzette, thank you so much for being amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, your voice, your presence. I am so honored to know you. I am so, so honored to know you. And I can't wait for you to come back. Um, yep, they're saying, come back, please come back. She will, you know she will. Yes. <laughs> um, we're gonna get her, we're gonna bring her back next month if, if she has time. Because oh, yeah. podcast, this enough fact and stuff is blowing up. <laughs> so y'all better hop on, okay? Um again, thank you. I love you so much. I love you so so much. Thank you for creating magic with me yet again. I know. <laughs> we love you guys. We're gonna let you go. Bye. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, love. Take care.